today we are going to discuss about the histology of nervous system right uh, what is nervous system by the way yes i think you are going to tell me what is the nervous system a system which is all the time nervous is nervous system uh, the communication branches the communication system uh, it's electrical a electrical communication or chemical communication of the body okay well, i will make it simple nervous system is basically made of lot of neurons and their supporting cells which is mainly concerned with the collection of information from external and internal environment what nervous system is doing it is collecting the information from external and internal environment and within the nervous system lot of information is stored and decisions are made about the responses and then through its motor system nervous system generates responses right so what is nervous system nervous system is a special system present in our body made of neurons and their supporting cells right main function of the nervous system is that it should collect the sensory information from external environment as well as from internal environment right and it should integrate the information coordinate the information in its central part and then generate responses through the motor system right so nervous system is anatomically divided into two parts central nervous system and peripheral nervous system so let's suppose here i draw central nervous system of course you must be recognizing the part of the central nervous system uh, up to this what is this all this part hurry up please spinal cord right and right so this is spinal cord and uh, what is from here to here yes medulla and what is this pons yes very good what is this mid brain mid brain what is this cerebellum cerebellum and what is this cerebrum cere brum there are two cerebral hemispheres right and left of course so this is a diagram of central nervous system central nervous system consists of its upper part all the part of the central nervous system above the spinal cord is called yes what is it called brain is that right and here is spinal cord so we can say central nervous system consists of spinal cord and the brain is that right in the brain there is brain stem right and brain stem consists of which, which structures in the brain there is brain stem brain stem consists of which structures brain stem consists of mid brain pons medulla these three structures are called brain stem right mid brain pons and medulla are called brain stem and on the back of the brain stem you have cerebellum and above the brain stem you have cerebrum or cerebral hemispheres is that right now this is your central nervous system now how really nervous system work let me make a very simple diagram that again i repeat the diagram of here central yes please nervous system and there is peripheral nervous system now what is the duty of peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system has one part which is collecting the information from the periphery this part which is taking the information to the central nervous system right this part of the neuron which is taking information to the central nervous system this is called which part of the nervous system this is sensory sensory system right there are lot of neurons in the body which are collecting the sensations from external and internal environment and taking those sensations to the central nervous system is that right 
so this part of the peripheral nervous system which takes the information to the central nervous system is called sensory system then from the central nervous system once information goes to the central nervous system right information is recognized it is compared with the present information with the past information and appropriate responses are generated and these are the neurons which are bringing information and response outside the central nervous system and this group of neurons right which bring the information from central nervous system to the periphery and generate the response this is called motor system so we can say that anatomically nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system has brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system has sensory part and motor part right now all these part of the nervous system has lot of cells which conduct the electrical impulses or which conduct the yes action potentials is that right now basically we say central nervous system and peripheral nervous system consist of two types of cells when you talk about histology you talk about the types of the cells there are cells in nervous system there are two types of cells which are present in the nervous system right of course everyone knows that there are neurons and there are what is the other group of cells yes glial cells or we should call them sporting cells because glial cells are the sporting cells in central nervous system and there are schwann cells and other cells which support the peripheral nervous system but when we talk especially about the nervous system we can say nervous system has neurons neurons are very special type of cells right and each neuron is one special type of cell how many neurons do you have imad you never counted you were busy in exams isn't it you have a few thousands oh my god he has few thousand i think frog has in millions yeah there are how many 10 millions or billions billions yes you must remember you have billions of the neurons you are billionaire as far as neurons are concerned right as far as neurons are concerned you are billionaire yes shan what you are saying how many 200 billion neurons i never counted them i th that is why you are wrong look actually neurons and sporting cells are different right neurons are about there are billions of neurons and sporting cells are many times more than the neurons right but just don't sit and count your neurons all the time just remember that you are billionaire as far as neurons are concerned is that right now the billions of the neurons and sporting cells to the neurons are far more than the neurons itself right but there is one question what is the difference in the neuron and the sporting cells or in central nervous system what is the difference in neuron and the glial cells the answer is coming from yes ma'am what is the real difference between the neuron and the glial cells for example you remove my central nervous system i hope not and you separate neurons on one side and you put all the glial side cells on the other side what is the real and basic difference in the neurons and non neuronal cells because these are not neuronal cells all the cells in central nervous system and peripheral nervous system other than the neurons are called not glial they are called sporting cells and sporting cells in the central nervous system are called glial cells what is the real difference in neuron and glial cell yes i'm about to be impressed by someone <laughs> okay uh, he has come up with an idea that neurons cannot be regenerated once they are destroyed and glial cell may be i think there uh, there is some more important difference between the neurons and glial cells yes please uh, something about dendrites oh my god uh, you, yeah what is the difference between neuron and the glial cell there is some very basic difference 
The main thing is neurons are conducting cells. They conduct the current. They conduct the action potentials. They are excitable cells, right? And glial cells are non-conducting cells. That is so simple. When you start the histology of central nervous system, you simply say central nervous system has basically two types of cells. Or the whole nervous system has two types of cells. It has one type of cells which are conducting the electrical impulses, right? Cells which can generate and propagate action potentials. Those are called conducting cells, is that right? So in the nervous system, all those cells which can generate and can be excited and generate action potential and conduct the action potential, all those cells as a group are called neurons. And all other cells in central nervous system which cannot generate the action potential and which cannot conduct the action potential, which are a group as a group, functionally they are non-conducting cells, they are called glial cells in central nervous system. Am I clear? Right. Now, today we will discuss into detail only neurons. And in next lectures, we will talk about glial cells. So, first of all, we will talk about the neurons. What are neurons? Now, from this discussion, we have already an idea that neurons are very special type of cells which are capable of conducting signals in the form of action potentials. Is that right? In the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Right? In the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, those cells which can generate and conduct the electrical impulses, action potentials, they are called neurons. Right? Neurons are very special type of cells. Now, there are many types of neurons again. First, I will make a typical neuron. A typical neuron is having a cell body. Of course, every cell has a cell body, isn't it? So, neurons also have cell body because they are cell. So, let's suppose this is a simple cell with a nucleus. And what is this? Cytoplasm. And from here, from its membrane, you bring many extensions out. You are bringing many ex extensions out. Now from this cell, we are bringing the extensions out and these membranous extension, of course, having some cytoplasm, these small extensions, right, they usually receive the information from other neurons or from the receptors. They receive the information, right. So these are called, what are this part of the, this type of extensions? They are called dendrites. What are they called? Dendrites, right. And Neurons have, a typical neuron has one very long process here, right? And this long process is called, yes, this is called, please tell me, exon, right? So what, and what is this? This is the cell body of the neuron and cell body of the neuron is also called soma. So we can say, that every neuron consists of, a typical neuron consists of cell body and extensions from the cell body, right? Some extensions are called dendrite and one special extension which is very long is called, called axon. Is that right? Now my question is, what is the real difference between dendrites and axon? Yes, please. Yes, please. What is the real difference between the dendrite and axon? You have studied this topic, you told me. Yeah. Yes. Say it loudly so that, yes. What is dendrite? That's very good. Actually, look, what is this? What is a neuron? Neuron is the fundamental basic unit cell of nervous system. And it should be able to receive the information 
and pass the information forward. Actually, dendrites are those extensions of the neuronal cell body. These are those extensions from the neuronal cell body which receive the information, right? For example, there is one neuron here. It is giving message here. There is another neuron which brings information here. Some other neurons bring information here. So actually, dendrites are extensions from the cell body just to increase the surface area of the cell body on which information can be received from other neurons. So you can say this is the sensory part of the neuron itself. That is that right? The action potential in the dendrite move from the periphery to the cell body. The electrical impulses in dendrite move from the periphery to the, yes please, cell body. So what are dendrites? Dendrites are the receptor component of the neuron because it receives the information. So dendrites are receptor components of the neuronal neurons. Again remember, basically one neuron may be receiving information from how many other neurons? You can say neuron is listening to other neurons. If neuron is listening to other neurons, dendrites are like their ears. So neurons have many ears. To one neuron, how many neurons are maybe simultaneously talking? Like if we talk about Imad, how many girls simultaneously talk to you? But you are not lucky to have always two girls. But Okay, he is confused. Uh, anyway, what I am saying that how many girls can talk to a man? Usually you have two ears. You have two receiving points. Even though many can talk here and here. But still, neurons simultaneously can receive information from one neuron can simultaneously receive information from how many neurons? More than 10,000 neurons. Can you imagine? You have billions of the neurons and every neuron on average is talking to 10,000 neurons. You can say how many social circuits are going on in your central nervous system. You are getting it. How many processing units and conducting units are there? How many circuits are there? One neuron on average receives information from about 10,000 neuron. Now look, if 10,000 neuron need to bring information to this neuron, that its cell surface area is very less. So there will be extension for the cell membrane making the dendrites and there are many many dendrites. So every dendrite, hundreds of the neurons are giving their information. Am I clear? So what are dendrites? Dendrites are the receptor component of the neurons and they are receiving the information and information, electrical information moves from the ends of the dendrite towards the cell body. And what is the difference between the axon, so in dendrites and axon? Yes, please. Classically speaking, typically speaking, axon is that, that process of the neuronal cell which takes the information away from the cell body, right? For example, many neurons stimulating these dendrites and cell body. Then action potential will move through the axon to the next neuron. So it means that in the axon, impulses are traveling away from the electrical impulses or action potentials are moving away from the cell body. And in case of dendrite, information is moving, yes, towards the cell body. So what did we learn up to now? That a typical, what is neuron? Neuron is a cell present in cell, central nervous system or peripheral nervous system. This is basically a cell which is specialized in generation and conduction of action potentials. Is that right? And we have billions of the neurons and these billions of the neurons make lot of connections with each other. On average, one neuron in the central nervous system simultaneously 
receiving information may be from about 10,000 neurons, right? Because a neuron has to receive information from many, many other neurons. So its cell body has many, many extension. So surface area is increased to receive the messages from other neurons. So dendrites and the cell body are in a way receptor component of the neuron. And all the information which come to the neuron through the dendrite or direct, you know, one neuron may be bringing information to dendrite or some neuron may bring information directly to the cell body, right? Whatever information comes here, eventually this information will determine the production of action potentials in the axons. And from the axons, action potential will move away from the cell body. So dendrite take the action potential towards the cell body, axons take information away from the cell body, dendrites are receptor component of the neuronal cell, axons are effector component. They produce effect on the next cell. So axons are called effector component of the cell, neuronal cell body, right? There is another term which is very commonly used. As you know, there are dendrites and there are axons, right? Remember, usually one neuron may have many dendrites but one neuron has only one axon. Is that right? Now, and such neurons which have many, many dendrites and one axon, we call them multipolar neurons. We'll go to that in detail later. Now, there's another term used uh, which is called neurite. What is neurites? Have you heard of the term neurites? Neurites. Yes, please. What are neurites? Anyone? Neurites are all the extension coming from the neuronal cell. So all the dendrite and axons together are called neurites. Why I say this term? Because you should not be confused by this. What is neurite? Neurites are all extensions from the neuronal cell body. There are two types of neurites. There are dendrites and there are, yes please, axons. Am I clear? Any problem up to this? No. Now we come to morphological classification of neurons. 